In this video I'm going to discuss my solar stats for the month of August 2023. Another month where the weather has not been great and the shorter days are definitely creeping back up on us. Later I'll be looking at the export stats on flux, how much I've used to power my EV for the month and also looking at the payback. I'll also be digging into a clever little app I've been using for my Tesla over the last month and I've added the Intelligent Octopus costs to my payback calculations as well to see how that compares. Let's dive into the figures, stay tuned. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, I'm Danny V Solar and if you're new to the channel here you can follow my personal journey for all things solar, renewables, electric vehicles, energy tariffs and money saving. Please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and also commenting as that helps me get further exposure on YouTube and hopefully helps me to help more people in turn. If we can, let's all do our bit to make the world a greener and better place. The high generation figures of June seem a long long time ago now and it certainly feels like we're on the decline into the winter months in terms of solar generation, despite it only being August. I think August was generally a tale of sunny spells, although there was the odd sunny day to make up the figures. So how did that affect the sums for the month? For July, I generated 674 kilowatt hours, and this month in August was way down on that. Just as a quick reminder of my install, in December 2022, I had 6.32 kilowatt peak a solar array installed on my house. I had six panels on the east roof and 10 panels on the west roof. You can find out more about my solar install in a video linked in the description as well. That was my first YouTube video and is still my most viewed to date. I'm currently with Octopus Energy for my gas and electricity supply and I'm using their smart tariff called Octopus Flux, which has been great for me over the spring and summer months this year. You can find out more about Octopus Flux in many of my other videos. If you would like to sign up to Octopus Energy, I now have a referral link on the screen. If you use this, you get £50 added to your account and I also get £50 as well. Thank you to everyone that's used this so far. A number of people have asked what my plan is for winter when the solar generation dies down a little. My thinking right now is at the point where I end up importing more than I'm exporting, that would be my trigger to look to switch and I'd probably move to an EV specific tariff such as Intelligent Octopus or Octopus Go which will allow me to charge my EV and battery at the low overnight rates when the solar is not generating enough to see me through the day and then I can use the power that's stored in the battery throughout the day to avoid using peak electricity rates. As I mentioned earlier, I've included the Intelligent Octopus figures against the actual figures on flux for the month of August, so you can see how that compares later in this video. With the Octopus tariffs, you can switch between a smart tariff every 30 days as of August 2023. So my plan would be to switch to the EV tariff around about October time and then probably switch back to flux probably March, April next year. Although the market's changing that fast at the moment, things could change a lot in six to eight months. As I always say, everyone's usage patterns are very different, so be sure to do your own sums for each case. Okay, so first let's start with solar generation for the month of August. I didn't quite reach even 550 kilowatt hours for this month, totaling a grand total of 549.71 kilowatt hours, which equates to around about 125 kilowatt hours less than July's pretty low figure for midsummer. Of this, 90 kilowatt hours went directly into home consumption, 158 kilowatt hours went into charging the battery, and 301 kilowatt hours went to the grid as export. I did note this month that since the system was installed in December 2022, I've now generated over 4 megawatt hours, which I'm pretty happy with overall, and I would expect that figure to reach around about 4.8 to 5 megawatt hours across the course of the year, which for a 6.32 kilowatt peak system is not too bad east-west facing, and is ahead of the PVGIS expectation of around about 4.5 megawatt hours for the year, despite the pretty bad summer. The best day of generation throughout August was the 11th where we made 28.55 kilowatt hours for the day and the worst day was the 2nd of August where we only made 6.06 .06 kilowatt hours. If we look closer at the best day of the month, generation started at around 6am when the battery was at 51% of charge. The battery was full by around about 10.45am and we had a maximum generation of 4.5 kilowatts at around 1pm. But as you can see from the graph, there's quite a few clouds in the sky and plenty of dips in the generation throughout the day. I then discharged some of the battery back to the grid between 5 and 7 p.m. to maximise the return on the export and the solar stopped generating around about 8.30 p.m. So this means that in comparison to the best day last month, we lost around an hour's worth of generation at both the start and end of the day, which kind of makes sense as we lose about two minutes of light at both the start and end of the day as the nights get 
shorter so across a month that equates to an hour at dusk and an hour at dawn as well for the worst day for generation for the month you can see that the battery didn't actually get filled up to 100 percent all day only getting as high as 93 percent so no export for that day at all i guess we could have sent some back around about 6 to 7 pm in that peak window but i decided against it as i didn't want to be short the next day and end up having to draw from the grid max generation on this day was only 1.3 kilowatts however if we look at the consumption for that day that was 5.73 kilowatt hours so it did just about cover the usage for the day still so i can't complain too much be sure to let me know how your results compare in the comments below i'm always interested to hear how your solar systems got on i imagine most of you will be feeling the same and it feels like we've been a little bit robbed this year of summer Hopefully we have a good month in September, although I seem to think I remember saying that last month as well. If we next look at home consumption, we used 154.85 kilowatt hours for the month. So again, a pretty low month in terms of usage, which is what we like to see. Although there is still the EV consumption to be accounted for on top of this. Pretty steady daily usage for the home throughout the month with variations between 3.37 and 7.23 kilowatt hours per day minus EV charging, which I'll come on to soon. Most of this home usage for the month was covered from either the solar directly or the battery, and we only drew 0.56 kilowatt hours from the grid this month again, so very happy with that. The Zappy said we'd drawn 0.81 kilowatt hours minus the EV, so let's go with that for the calculations, but all the same, less than one kilowatt hour grid usage across the month, which is great. Now, if we look at the car charging for the month, in June, I purchased my Tesla Model 3 Performance and had a Zappy home charger installed as well. You can check out the video about the car here. My MOT is due this month, so fingers crossed everything goes okay with that. For the month of August, I imported 268.1 kilowatt hours from the grid to the power of the car, which is around 70 kilowatt hours less than last month, which is good as it felt last month was a little bit high for some reason. There was a gap early in the month in charging, as you can see, when I was off on paternity leave, so I did travel a little bit less this month, but probably not too far off normal, maybe a little bit lower. I did start using a great little app called Tessie this month on August the 5th, so I'll be able to track my journeys and my efficiency that the EV is producing more closely going forward. I'll leave a link in the description for those Tesla owners that may be interested in using this. It provides all sorts of great stats, such as efficiencies for each trip, charging stats, costs, and even estimates battery degradation. Although I'm not too sure how accurate that is and what it uses to base that on. If you're interested, it reckons that my Tesla Model 3 2019 has lost 4.8% of its range over four years, so not too bad, I guess. Let me know what yours says in the comments if you've downloaded it and how it compares to mine. From the 5th of August, the Tessie app reckons that I've traveled 674 miles and used 201 kilowatt hours. So a little lower than the Zappies estimated, although because I only started recording this on the 5th, the charge on the 1st is not included in that. If we go off these figures though, that gives an efficiency of 3.35 miles per kilowatt hour or 298 watt hours per mile. So not too bad for a 480 brake horsepower car with normal everyday driving. If we look back at the charging again, I always try and utilize that cheap three hour window on flux where I'm only paying 17.5 pence per kilowatt hour of electricity to charge. There were a few times where this ran past 5am slightly, so a total cost to charge for the month of £48.82, so not too bad at all, and much cheaper than my old diesel BMW would have cost me. Grid export next, and this is me sending my excess solar power back to the grid, and a total this month of 380 kilowatt hours, although the Octopus app actually said 385 kilowatt hours, so around about 130 kilowatt hours down on last month. Again, due to in part the shorter days and the not great weather, but still a good chunk more than the 268 kilowatt hours that we imported. So Octopus Flux still looking like the better option for me as it stands right now, but it is a bit closer than I thought it was going to be for the month of August. You can see of that 380 kilowatt hours, 301 kilowatt hours was direct from the solar back to the grid, and 79 was from forced discharge in the battery between 4 and 7 p.m. each day. There was a couple of days where there was very little export back to the grid as well thanks to the rain clouds that we had that month. If we move on to look at overall payback for the system, you can see the figures for August added onto my usual spreadsheet. As I mentioned, I've also included the comparison with Intelligent Octopus this month. Assuming I didn't have solar, this would likely be the tariff that I would be on since I now own an EV. 
And looking at the figures, you can see the consumption for the home was 154.85 kilowatt hours for the month. The import from the grid, excluding the car, was 0.81. So that gives a cost of around about 24 pence. Generation was 549.68 for the month and 385.18 of that was exported back to the grid. So that just tips £100 in export for the month, £101.12 for that total. So overall, the cost without solar would have been £46.46 in terms of electricity usage. The cost with solar was minus £100.88, so a saving of £147.34 for this month. If we add that onto the cumulative savings, we're now over £1,000, £1,101.13. And that leaves a remaining payback of 9,878. So into four figures now, which is good. If we include the electric vehicle charging on that, we use 268.1 kilowatt hours. On flux, that cost us 48 pounds and 82 pence. On octopus intelligent, Obviously, with that cheaper rate, uh, 17.5 pence on Flux versus 7.5 pence on Intelligent Octopus, we'll be looking at £20.11 pence for that. Uh, the diesel cost went up quite significantly this month, so £1.53 pence per litre. Equivalent diesel cost would have been around about £130.90 pence for the miles I've done. That gives us fuel savings on Flux of £82.08 pence. And on intelligent, £110.79 saving. And I've used the flux savings to calculate the cumulative savings on this. So the total monthly savings, including the car, would have been £229.42. And, and that gives us a cumulative saving of £1,358. So remaining payback, £9,621 if we include the car. Um, we've had some debate in the comments about whether it should be including the car. As I mentioned earlier, I would probably be on this tariff if I just had the car. So I'm still using the just the solar stats really, that top number there, 9,878 to calculate the remaining payback. And if we look at the bill overall for the month, the electricity standing charge was again 15 pounds and six pence, and we used 49 pounds and six pence of electricity. Export, we were paid 101 pounds and 12 pence this month. The gas standard charge was eight pounds and 42 pence for the month, and our usage was just two pounds and 90 pence. So we still use the gas to heat the hot water at the moment and for some occasional usage on the hob as well. And that gives a total of minus 25 pound and 68 pence for this month. So despite the not so great British summertime resulting in lower generation and export, we still have a negative bill, even when charging an EV for the month, which is absolutely incredible, really. The total monthly solar generation chart, as you can see, we have definitely peaked for 2023 now, and the August generation is way down on the July generation, and actually slightly less than what we generated in April as well, surprisingly. The best, worst, and average generation chart for the month of July looks like this. And as you can see, this also looks like it's starting to come down now where we're heading towards the darker nights. Average daily generation for the month was 17.7 kilowatt hours. So again, more than covering our pretty low usage on a daily basis, but starting to come down now. So after eight and a bit months, we've finally tipped over £1,000 in savings versus not having solar. And we're up to over £1,300 if we include the EV in that as well. So ahead of my target on the initial payback estimate of seven to eight years, and hopefully we'll come in quicker than that. But obviously a lot can change between now and then. Either way, I'm still very happy with my decision to install solar, both from an investment point of view and also the green element as well. I'll certainly be watching the figures in September closely to see if we should be switching to a different tariff now. And I'm also keeping a close eye on what the companies offer for their standard export guarantee as well. Um, with the smart tariffs for the EV tariffs, you can only be on the standard export guarantee for Octopus, which is currently 4.1 pence per kilowatt hour. So much less than what I'm getting on Flux at the moment. Uh, Scottish Power though do offer 12 pence per kilowatt hour. So I might look to switch to that for export only as the winter draws in. If anyone's using Scottish Power for export, please let me know in the comments how you got on and how quick the transfer was. Anyway, that's about it for this month. I hope you found that useful. I haven't been doing my weekly videos quite as much as I was recently due to having a six-week-old daughter to look after. But I will try and get back to more frequent videos when I get a chance. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.